Okay. But well, I don't know for sure. We'll find out yeah, in a moment. Yeah, we'll find hey, out. Hey, Miss Fortune. Okay, this... This is not the same draft. I mean, it is the same draft, but it's not the same draft. This is a different game. All right, we've now confirmed it's a different game. We're not in uh, the same timeline. We didn't, like, have some sort of glitch in the Matrix. I a mean, failure is thrashed this time. Yeah, I was going to say. So, through the first six bands, because the cannon was also banned. Okay. I checked. Uh, yeah, the failure is thrashed change up. I'm happy to see it. I'll say it. I assume everyone else is saying it, because, oh, that was an ugly Lucian Nami game. Um, you know, just a, to a, a bit of a disaster, and I don't think they want to risk that again. Aphelios Thresh, we've seen a little bit throughout the tournament. Um, still a strong champion. Uh, still a strong bot lane as a whole. But without seeing the enemy team support yet, we'll have to see what they try and pair it up with. Thresh can be annoying for a lot of the standard engaged champions, but Amumu is actually one of the ones that is not too bad because you can't play the engage necessarily the same way you can with some of the others because you'll get stunned up as soon as it comes in. So I um, want to see how this interacts between the two of them. Though the range advantage is still annoying for Amumu. For sure. Always the struggle and why Thresh is good. Yep, there's definitely, you know, 2v2 uh, to be had here for Zvena Volka, but it's not nearly the same. Like, we are trying to stop this lane 2v2 that Lucian Nami uh, yeah. usually is. Obviously, uh, not quite so good in the early stages. Lee Sin, though, for Babbit, apparently means all left time for Blabber. Uh, definitely good with Thresh as well. Obviously, get a little extra movement for yourself there. You know, you don't have to use your legs for a ride. You can just take the lantern off to safety. I am a little surprised to see it over Zinn priority. I still feel like Zinn is a strong champion, uh, even though Babbit ended up uh, dying a couple times towards the end of that game. He had a, a decent early game to get a really good lead. So uh, I would have expected to see them just swap those junglers, but with the Lee Sin takeaway, Blabber wants something that has the ability to just scrap Lee Sin out really hard. I mean, that's always funny when you see the two go up against each other. Lee Sin tries to kick the ulted Olaf and just goes, all right, well, I guess you'll just keep hitting me with those axes. <laughs> All right, well, already in phase two of bands here. Rumble actually taken off Respect the table Respect ban here. for Chachi. Yeah. Haven't seen the poppy in this series just yet. Of course, it has made an appearance already. Uh, Zoe also banned away from Perk, similarly respecting his power on that champion. Maybe doesn't need to respect too much after that. <laughs> no, I shouldn't say that. <laughs> Uh, yeah, and this time the, the, the lanes are more matched up. We had the slight difference in the two last time around where there was the mid lane versus the, the support position here. Um, with the matches in the initial phase of the draft, a lot of the bands are more targeted. Uh, at champion pools that you don't have your own, in your own, that's why you see the Rumble ban uh, because it's like, well, uh, Fudge is never going to play that. Just get rid of it. I also don't think on red side, you expect Fudge to want to play NAR either, so that's why that ban makes sense. As much as it is a general pick, it's one that you're not going to take on red side. So you're banning out this potentially safe blue side option, and Peace just slams a couple more mid lane bans down. Yeah, Sidra being banned you know, maybe opens up the rise. I don't think it's a you know, counter matchup by any means, but Perks obviously looks very good on that champion. Uh, Perks is going to take the rise blind here, though, feeling pretty confident there. Can flex it as well if they need to, but is more likely a Fudge champion. Uh, sorry, a Perks champion and a Fudge champion, as Akali is going to run down the clock and be the selection here for Peace. Okay. Let's see what their final pick is. Interesting to see the, the Akali picked into Rise back a little while ago. That was a matchup they'd actually take Rise into because the spell flux bouncing off Akali and her shroud and all that kind of stuff. Uh, maybe with some of the recent changes, it's not quite as potent. Pairing it up with the Shen, though, makes a lot more sense. Uh, Tally likes to be a playmaker, likes to play these assassins like we were talking about in the last game. And the Shen gives you a dive buddy and a shield to be a little bit more aggressive. You also have a Mumu and the, the Lee Sin. So you have basically four dive champions with an ultimate on top of it. So very much a dive comp for the side of peace with the GP lock in for Fudge. This is a very kite back focus comp on the side of C9. Yep. You know, have, you know, Vulcan maybe to find some picks. But definitely going to be running around the side lanes a lot here. You know, Blab is going to be running into smaller fights rather than full-on 5v5s like we saw in the last game. Yeah, he's a... He, the, the Olaf is a bit awkward in this team comp in the late game. But in the early game, his job is to make sure that he is in the right position to win 2v2s and 3v3s that are going to be breaking out in the lanes. Um, and less about, oh, late game, I'm an Olaf. Well, late game, Olaf doesn't do a ton anyways generally. So here, it's very much when they jump on you to help DPS threats down, the Olaf actually won't probably be charging for the MF. Maybe that's his job. Face plant the MF so she can't just full channel her ult on top of your team. Maybe that's what he's going to be going for. We'll have to see. But that's that's a question for 25 minutes in the game. Yep. We got to get there first. Yep. And uh, Flavis Olaf is, you know, on form like it has been in the time we've seen it already in the tournament. Then could be rough there in the early game. Also very 
I always hesitate to like talk about Gangplank being a counter pick because like yes, this is a spot that is very common where you'll pick him into tanks and historically it's been very good. But I feel like Gangplank isn't the kind of champion that like absolutely buries a 1v1 matchup. He more just like gets so far ahead in gold that uh, it's not very fun to play against. And then he's like, you know, battling his 20-30 CS lead plus all his keg gold versus like whoever. It's funny because GP can do that. Yes. If you don't play the matchups against GP well, you get trial by fire, Q poke spammed, um, and you get these grass procs on you and it's very annoying. And suddenly you're at half health and, and GP's at full health and you're scared to contest the wave now and the barrels build up. So if you do try and walk up to the wave, it barrel chains you and like, it can go south very quickly against GP matchups. But if you play it well, you trade well, you're both low health, you're fighting the, the barrel mini game, then you actually can, um, you know, get into these kinds of, like you're saying, these situations where the GP is mostly just farming and getting that extra gold income because he is always still a late game threat. Definitely trust Chachi have his handle on the matchup, but this is definitely one of the trickier ones. Like, not every tank you've created equal in the laning phase. Chen is surprisingly good, but I think Gangplank should be, should be very happy here. Both them are good about beating up other melee matchups um, for their, their respective roles as like, I'm a, I'm a late game scaling threat as GP and, and for Shen to be like, I'm a global tank thing. You know, both them actually do hurt quite a bit if you get the pull through on the blade get the bonus percent health damage for Chachi. Uh, that is a, a key Minions part of the Shen trading pattern. And you can do some nice setups as well. You know, you can see Shen sometimes leak into lane early, put their like their their sword in the brush behind you. And then uh, when you come to lane, they get the pull through instantly. Like you can do some tricky stuff like that. But Chachi looks like he's more focused on defending the jungle entrance for Babip. Tally not gonna ward. Oh, Dark actually has a sweeper ready to go. Already put a ward down in the brush. So not gonna use it just yet. And looks like things are gonna be nice and calm to start things off. But his opposite side starts though, both on their blues. Little bit of help there from Chachi. As Fudge meets the wave, no help for Blabber. Doesn't really need it. Maybe even happy to get lower on health as Violet. Straight to the wave. Yep, both bot lanes there right away, so you'll see some contesting trying to get control of this wave. Though you expect it to go in the favor of Aphelios Thresh, the green gun plus the extra range of uh, Falcon means they can just both be autoing the wave where it's a little bit harder for a move to help on the push. Such good RNG, always has the green gun level one. I don't know, man. It's so crazy. Yeah, I know. Wild. But oh, goodness, Alan Ark at it again. Ben's gonna be burnt off. Guardian prop, but Alan Ark's just flashing in there. Straight in he goes. Bandage touch charge is all out. But uh, Sven's got no summoner spells. Yeah, nice aggression there. I mean, that's one of the ways that you can win the level one. Because like I said, you can't walk up and just hit minions in front of each other. So Aldoric uses the brush to get a little bit of control there. And then the double bandage toss. This is something I've been waiting to talk about all weekend. All right. A lot of people talk about the double bandage toss for the extra CC and, you know, the extra gap closing that allows Mumu to stick on targets and stuff. Uh, but one of the important things is also just the damage that comes through with it. Um, it did get nerfed a little bit, but on rank one, you only lose 10 damage. Uh, so it goes from 80 to 70 after they added the second charge. It has a three second cooldown, you know, so it, it is spaced out a little bit. But that's a lot of extra damage level one. On top of the fact the ratio got buffed. Hold on here, this might be a kill. No flash, no cleanse, good hook, Babbit flashes, and Sven is once again first blooded for Cloud9. Aladoric though does find the bandage onto Vulcan, but they cannot find the follow up. This is how you're supposed to play Mumu. Really aggressively, you trade flashes early on, and then your jungler pathing bots to top or excuse me, top to bot, sets up this level three gank that's super easy. Now Vulcan and Sven can't walk up, else they're gonna get killed, and they push the wave a little bit early on. So there you see, very easy for them to get that kill. And like I was saying, they also buffed the ratio on the bandage toss going from 70% to 85%. You take double adaptive uh, force for for Amumu's rune choice, so you actually have an insane burst in level one. All right, mid lane now, but Blava here ready to shadow this gank. Kirk's already chunked down Tally, but maybe 3v1's gonna be a little too tough. Level two there for Aladoric, but that's good enough as Tally is gonna flash it. Aladoric will give up his life, but Tally needs to finish up Perk. It's gonna oh. happen at the end of it all, but it's a trade, and Blava got the other kill as well. Bit of a disaster there for Peace. They walked into the Rise, tried to fight him, and you know, Rise, level two, level three, pretty scary with the spell fluxes bouncing around. Able to chunk out multiple people and Olaf just waiting there, able to free hit on multiple members as they dove in. Really good counter gank there from Blabo. Love the attempt from Peace again. Aladar continuing to stay aggressive, which you need to do on the Amumu, but was red there and uh, Perks was just able to get away with it here. Uh, setting up this really nicely actually, but again, Blabo being patient. Yeah, just waiting to go in. Then there you see the, the double bounces between Babbitt and Aladar. 
Blabber absolutely destroys Aladork and then refocuses onto Babip. Uh, and at this point, you know, Babip was saying, oh, I I'm going to try and get out of here. I think it would have been a little bit better if they tried to just all fork, focus down, finish off the rise. He'd probably all still die, but maybe Tally doesn't have to burn his flash or whatnot. But either way, Cloud9 answer back quite cleanly. Getting a uh, 500 gold lead about it. Babip battle again here. Vance still no subs. But Violet already a little too low. Vulcan finds the hook, but now they're gonna get out of the Aladoric. Finds Bandage Wall, but here's Blabber this time. Flash again, Max Range Q finds it! As Aladoric will kill Vulcan, but TP coming hot, but now it's the counter TP as Blabber. He just wants blood, he's going in, Buzaki on everyone! And that is a fatal mistake as he is shut down, but Perk, he's able to take down Babip on the trade, and there's nothing more to come here for Cloud9. Chachi using his teleport down into the bot lane to save that play. Fudge ends up holding his, so he's going to get uh, a little bit of an advantage in the minion wave. The minions were in front of his turret. Ch Chachi had the, the push on him, so he was able to use that. Um, so very close fight there, and you can see just how touch and go this is. Uh, Babbitt wants to punish, but Clabber does read this. He understands this is a power point right now for Peace Gaming, so uh, he goes down there to try and cover his bot lane. It's very scrappy. It looks like it's still going to be in favor of Cloud9 just with how powerful Olaf is right away. So it's critical that Chachi actually did channel this TP to make it a little bit more even of a trade. Still ends up being two for two because of that TP. Uh, so well done by, by Chachi to keep that safe. Alrighty, as we come back in, Cloud9 find themselves up a little bit, only 400 gold or so. But we'll see what happens here. Top side players here, but Vip is in trouble. Is does not have flush and will be killed as Vulcan with the nice throw sets up for Blabber's third kill. There you go. Uh, Blabber off to the races. This is what happened the last time we saw his Olaf. Picked up a ton of kills and plays. Um, then ended up falling off a little bit. But right now, he is such a force in the early game. I mean, I didn't th think that C9's comp would be this early game focused, but they are just matching. These. Oh, just setting it up as well. Aladoric walks straight to the waiting arms of Vulcan. Blabber's now level 6. Pumps the Ragnarok for a bit of extra damage and does indeed get yet another kill. But Cloud9 at this point is starting to permanently sit in Peace's jungle. And I don't know how Blabber's Olaf always seems to do it, but he does. We have a mid lane magic. We'll hold on that for a second because Ven's getting in onto Violet, but there is nothing to come of it. As we will have a look at the mid lane matchup once again. This is our feature matchup presented by Mercedes Benz. Tally vs. Perk's actually been quite a fun affair so far. Yeah, there's been a lot of attention to mid lane both games so far. Uh, Perks getting the better of the matchup both times so far, I'd say, just a little bit. Syndra did have the help of his team, but once he got fed, kind of ran away with it. Tally came back in the game later, but early lane phase went in his favor. And here, yet again, the Akali struggling early into the rise like we kind of expected. Um, and the initial ganks thrown that way. All it did was feed Perks and more kills. And Blabo. Okay. One and three now. We yeah. all have Go drink it done as Perks is working on that first Oh item. my god, a seven minute core drinker? Yeah. <laughs> That's disgusting. <laughs> I mean, I, I tell you, I don't know how he keeps getting away with it, but he does. Even as a charge like the smite, he's been too busy hitting champions. I don't know if I've seen that in, a, in any of the programs I've watched, where the jungler gets his Gore Drinker Mythic before finishing yeah. his smites. Yeah, actually, I don't think that might be uh, might be Wolf Mythic. I'll have to find out. Got his chill, just hits on the board, is once again saying, hey, like, don't go into this 2v2 or 3v3, because I'm ready. Maybe the earliest MasterCard noise you'll hear in this <laughs> tournament. <laughs> Coming in for before eight minutes, and, and with all that pressure that they have, this clever makes sense. Cloud9 start getting the dragon snowball stack. Well, the fifth smite is on the dragon. A little late for all up, but again, Blab has been preoccupied with slaying the enemy champions, so Cloud9 won't be too unhappy with the eight minute infernal dragon. Perks also start to free those legs from the mid lane. Trot up towards the top side here. Does have the blue buff ready. Chachi a little too far forward. No flash either. This is looking tricky. The old Shen. Yeah, I'm gonna try and turn around, gonna kill onto Fudge. Fudge is gonna fade it out. There's the W just to make sure. And Perks picks up a nice easy one. Yep, Chachi knew he was dead. I like that more. Sometimes you see Shens in situations like that try and alt out. And that, I always feel like it's just a bit of a, a waste of a tool. Uh, so it just drops down there, dies. Babib's gonna go and catch this wave, but uh, Things are getting from bad to worse for Peace now. Oh, that Ooh. is such a nice call out for Babip. Finds him there in the brush ward, hops, hits the Q, and then kicks him in the face for the kill. Wow, that was, that was pretty surprising he was able to do that. I think uh, 
I wonder if he knew that Fudge was recalling a little bit first, that there was going to be a timing window where Perks' recall had finished and Fudge's had, and, and just knew where it was based off when they finished killing the minions, where they'd be. That was a, a pretty nasty call up I had. It was really nice enough. Labor actually 1v3 right now, because Tally's going to turn it up. Ragnarok is bumped. Alatorix just dead. But the Viking will be traded over. That is a much-needed shutdown gold there for Tally. Going back in, tags Volker, but it's the Rift Herald piece really want here. Yeah, I'm a little surprised that Blabber went for that. I guess it looked cool that you could 1v3 kill a, 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 a Moogle who has already died yeah. three times. Uh, but at that point, you hand over a fat shutdown. It doesn't stop the objective from going in their favor. Perks getting real aggressive. Oh, 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 that's the kill. Violet flashes a little too late. And Fun is able to get the kill with the ulti. Wow, I did not. I was not ready for that one. But Perks chunks out Violet hard enough that they just say, Hey, hey, Fudge, you want a free kill, buddy? Right about here. Makes it happen. As Vent getting some plates down here as well. Cloud9 starting to feel like they're running away with this early game a little bit more. Yes, Blabber ran himself into, into the, the Riptile Pit and died. I'm guessing he blast combed over and was like, oh, I'm committed. I guess I'll just fight instead of running away because using my flash here doesn't feel particularly useful. Why he's in that spot uh, is a different story, but mm. I think once he's in that position, he maybe made the correct play. But Perks is still looking good here uh, at 3 1 and 3, and plates are start plate gold starting to go over. Just feels like Cloud9 is building up a pretty big lead. 2,500 gold ahead right now. Yeah, Perks so far having an incredible series. As he, once again, sets the kill on Tally. No ult, flash only. Vulcan with a good play. Lines the hook and Blabber. Gonna grab kill number six. Uh, it's just so easy. So much version control for Cloud9 in the river. You see double pinks on both sides of the lane. One in the pixel brush, one in the top river. Brush of mid allows them to easily collapse on top of Tally. Alrighty, Alidor, bandage toss, ulti, looking for the kill, Vulcan into stasis, but abandoned by his teammate, nothing left to do, does go down to Violet. And <laughs> Vulcan trades the kill right back. Uh, they killed the mid laner, so it's like, great, time to go invade the enemy jungle, but, you know, Vulcan being the first one in, you are still pretty squishy as the Thresh, just having his boots completed and kindled death. Means it's very easy for Peace to punish him, especially with the Moomoo being six there. Yeah, nice little run there for Peace's bottom lane to stay active here as Babip down at the bottom side does have the Rift Herald here. So he's looking to get some plate gold donated over. Five minutes through the way first. Nice have ulti if he needs it. And now the Rift Herald's going to be dropped. Mid lane, Blabber once again, but Tally's still having flash this time. But Perk flashing in for the root. Now Tally's going to try and get the kill on the back end of the plate because Vizachachi has joined in. And now Blabber has to fight two different people, but you know what? He's okay with that. Gonna force a flash there out of Mr. Chachi. Getting in there, flash on top of Tally for the kill, and Chachi can't even fight back. Blabber knows the limits out so, All oh, right. so well. There we go. Blabber is figuring it out. Oh, goodness. Maybe it's not Blabber. Rampaging through the rest of the squad. Gets one. The taunt lands on the perks, but he's gonna get the third kill out of the deal as Blabber pushing it to the limit on Olaf. Blabber's Olaf is such a beast in the mid lane there, turning the gank first onto Tally. Chachi comes in. He stays on top of both of them. Doesn't matter how many people you bring to Olaf right now. Blabber's gonna kill. Not enough. Three was not the magic number. As Blabber finds himself back with shutdown gold, ready to perhaps give back over. Doesn't want to. <laughs> For eight kills already. We talked about that eight minute, some eight minute gold drinker. I don't know what's coming next. I was wondering if we could get a 13 minute Sterix off there, but I guess not quite. Here you go. Uh, again, Tally just pushed up pretty far in the lane. It's a nice gank set up by Perks. This time they have the Shenel to try and coordinate with this, but uh, I, you know, a nice rise Realm War by Perks kind of read the fact that that Shenel was going to be coming in, and it just leaves Blabber there to kind of slap both of them down. Tally's looking for a way to maybe turn with Chachi, but just too well coordinated on the flash auto with the Q coming on top. And then here, because it's not a QRQ combo, maybe they could have first hit Blabber, but either way, I mean, with the red buff ticking, it just never even got that low, and Blabber's able to just lifesteal tank through all that. Yeah, like Perks is like, oh, walks back slowly. Oh, we're winning this? Like, I'll, I'll help. I mean, Blabber just wanted the one kill, which he got to his credit, right? He the splash, gets it, feels pretty safe. Maybe didn't expect Babbage to turn around there, but uh, certainly worked out. The second dragon's gonna be grabbed there for Cloud9, grabbing themselves the ocean. It is Cloud again, Mark. We have been blessed. Sweet God, man. <laughs> I don't know. Again, like, one day we'll have to run the numbers on just how many Cloud Tricks uh, Cloud Nine have got. It does feel like a lot. Perks and Aladoric going to have a meeting. Vulcan's going to join in. Not really invited, but you know what? He's not doing too bad, but Blabber, oh, goodness. Everybody's dead. Oh, actually, Tally's all right. 
Oh, that pop in the ulti doesn't get a kill. Is must everybody feel dead? Like a bad deal. Or is nobody dead? But, uh, nobody was dead, but it feels like when Olaf appears on the screen, every champion around him instantly explodes. Yeah, I mean, it was a nice escape by Tally. He, he bought space for Alidork after his ultimate to run out of there, and then using the Shroud, kind of found his opportunity to escape what was certain death if he stayed. All right, well, disappointing in the uh, lack of body count there in that exchange, but... Bible will be back for more, I'm sure. For peace, they are going to have to stem the bleeding a little. They are down six and a half thousand gold, which is definitely rough. Violet not up to the same start. Actually, going lethality this time around. Field is a bit cheaper, so it's good on that front, but likely this good choice based on the game state in general. But, uh, you know, in the last game, Cloud then kind of had the lanes that they were looking to win, and Peace were able to fight back. This game definitely feels like, you know, if the plan was to win the early game for Cloud, early game for Cloud9, uh, that plan is going along swimmingly. Yeah, Cloud9 is uh, absolutely slaughtering this early game. There's really not that many easy ways for Peace to come back into it. Uh, we're talking about the Shen and Akali combo potentially in side lanes, but Ryze is so insanely fed at this point, and GP has his own global to match it that I, I feel like, you know, Perks is feeling pretty safe <laughs> if he ever does try and get 1v2 or 2v1s. Uh, and in the meantime, your bot lane's super far ahead. After what was a bit of a, a bad start, it stabilized pretty heavily because of the big domination and the jungle domination. So from here, they just run around, take the map. Uh, turrets, and the last one on the map is the mid outer. Yeah, it looks like they're working on this here, but I'm going to move down to get some vision in the enemy jungle. Vulcan, once again, is first on the scene, but he brings a friend with him this time, and now the flash play is going to find Babbit. No hook, and Blabber will not chase. Fudge going to be the target. Ty going to try and uh, get in there. Shen, of course, going to join the party. Nice little ulti, charging, lining it up. Fudge does use the flash. I believe he has oranges left still. He's going to try and dance around. Orange is out of the taunt. Looks for charge. He gets the outplay. Finds the first kill. Tally eating the tower shot as Fudge outplays them both for the double. Fudge with the 1v2. I was talking about Perks being the one to pull that off, but Fudge says, don't forget about me. I have a clean GP and a disaster for peace. One of the few map plays left that they probably could have tried to force. They did do their best attempt. I think there were a couple mistakes that they made there, uh, and it allows Fudge to the opportunity to pipe that one out and turn it around. And look, Fudge wasn't massively far ahead, but he's still on the winning team that has a huge goldie, right? Like, that play is made easier by the fact that he is ahead. But uh, this was still very nice to see for Fudge. Right, I mean, it starts out fine for Tally. The Shenault's coming in. Uh, tries to deliver him as close as he can. Has to drop turret aggro and wants to do it with the shuriken flip. Because he grabbed turret aggro first, he couldn't kite through the entire situation. So then when Shachi taunts in, there's no immediate follow-up from Tally. Tally also missed his E because of that. So that delayed the sequence long enough. As you see Fudge just kind of giggling at his boys. Not able to kill him there. Um, you know, if if Tally didn't grab turret aggro and could just follow behind Shachi, they, they probably get that kill. But that mistake was... Uh, what cost them and allowed that double kill for Fudge. Yeah, that uh, means we now have Cloud9 up 10,000 gold and uh, had quite a bloody game and a hands here between these two. And like I said, like, yes, that play looks silly, but you have to make those kind of plays when you're PC. Yep. Yeah. Hold on here. We'll get to try and make another one. Able to get out of there. Just got word from production that it was 21 kills at 15 minutes, I believe, the most at Worlds. I'm Ooh. not sure if that was this world or this World's world. history. I don't think it's World's history, but... uh. uh that's a lot of kills. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, we expected a bloody series. Game 1 definitely had, you know, a lot of back and forth, even if it took a little while for maybe the game to ramp up. This has been, you know, very different. But unfortunately for Peace, a bit more one-sided there for Cloud9. They are more than doubling the kills that Peace have right now. Peace, again, to their credit, are still fighting. You, you have to in this spot. Like, yes, you are throwing, like, good money up to bad in some ways. As Blab is just flashing in. There's a GPLT there. There's nothing you can do for Violet. Blabber Whoa. misses an auto, misses an axe. They get the tower out of the deal, but Aladorik finds two in the ulti. Bullet time! It's gonna turn it back around! You may have wished he killed the MF a little bit sooner, but still, there is just not enough gold to make the difference as the Realm Warp Sven takes out the enemy AD. This is a wallet fight right there! Yeah. Cloud9, doesn't matter how well you play it, you are already 10,000 gold up. Go ahead, miss as many skill shots as you want. You're still gonna win it. Uh, Cloud9, grab the mid lane turret there as well as two kills. Get out. Scott free. All right, well, another 1v1 is brewing. Oh, close to 1v2 because Shen's still there. Perks is level 13, by the way, but he's going to run out of there. Lantern is great there from Vulcan to save his teammate, and Perks does get out. Second, Shen the Kali combo comes up with nil. 
It's an improvement, though. Last one, you fed them a double kill. <laughs> yep. This time around, <laughs> uh, nothing happens. Are uh, we gonna watch this one again for the act replay? Blabba. I just he thought Violet was already dead. Yeah, he thought that was gonna kill him. Guess how turret range wants the fadeaway on the uh, oh, Yeah, the Gorge <laughs> misses that. That misses the fadeaway actually. At that point, he's like, ah, screw it, I didn't want to kill you anyways. Uh, the re-engage attempt was decent by Aldor to layer in with, with Violet, but they're just so far behind that it's actually not even much of a threat at all. And C9 just goes, oh, okay, you're still around. We thought you went back to base. <laughs> they support on top of him and finish him off. Nice one there out of Cloud9. Even if uh, Plabber didn't quite complete the first kill, Perks make sure to finish it there with the Realm Warp. And, you know, we were, we were at one point talking about, you know, the kill scores for Perks and for Blabber. And at this point, it's a little Christmas tree scoreboard there. Everyone's lit up there with some bonus gold now. To be fair, if Peace can find those kills or even just those trades, that is gold they'll be more than happy to take away from Cloud9. And when you're this far behind, what is that, 14,000 gold or so? Although Violet's going to chop that down a little bit by taking their first tower of the game. Uh, you know, any trade's a good trade at this point. As yeah. C9 are going to start Baron on spawn. On spawn, maybe they would have gone for this anyways, but especially after seeing multiple numbers of Peace down in the bot lane, uh, they're just going to start this one off. Peace has to run all the way across. Just now getting the mid lane with Baron below 50% HP. It's a free Red Bull Baron for Cloud9. Doesn't happen that often, but Cloud9 will take it now in Peace's defense. I don't think that we're going to be able to stop them anyway, but uh, Cloud9 make the obvious play. Take the Baron nice and swiftly. And we'll see what they can get done here. Retaining full duration of the buff. Lava is once again running aggressively <laughs> towards the enemy team. A literal 1v4. Gordrick is back to full <laughs> HP. Still not done. Fudge finds the double. Lava finds two as well. And it's Tally, the only one left to get, not give away the ace. <laughs> Oh, man, Blabber is feeling himself with the Baron buff, powering him up, charges in, like you said, 1v4, gets a fat gore drinker proc, gets the Sterex pop, mauls Violet down, and uh, the rest of Cloud9 eventually back him up. Might be the game here. They'll respawn in time, but at this point, I'm not sure if Cloud9 even wants to back him. They just dive both Nexus to Yeah, already up uh, quite a lot of gold off the back of this Baron buff. Cloud9 gonna take two in hips out of the deal, and we'll see what else they wanna get done here. Uh, do you have money to spend? Oh, Dorak, lovely look there with the bandage shot. Vulcan gonna be the target there. They're gonna try and fight the way up. Please have to do something, but again, the wall is just too big out of Cloud9, as I'll take a double kill there for Sven. Blabber is running down Vile under his own Nexus turrets, and Tally is just left to watch his base crumble to bits, as Cloud9 will take the 2 0 lead in the series. Aladoric with the go next fast engage. There was no MF fault. There's a pretty low chance of winning that fight, so they, they go ahead, pick it right in front of both their Nexus turrets. No surprise. Goes in Cloud Nine's favor and a monstrous answer after game one for Cloud Nine. Yep. They were really uh, struggling in game one to get a good foothold in that game. This time around, I mean, from three minutes onwards, four minutes onwards, as soon as Blabber got his first kill, the game felt like it was over. Yep. Ends with, uh, I believe, topping the kill score there for himself, had 10 kills, uh, at least before they push into the enemy base. Probably ended with a 